again. He left home hours ago. What good is my sorcery if I can't help my own boy? Answer me, someone. <coughs> He's not fooling me. I know where he is. He's at the magic pool again. Love is his curse. He is in love. You think I don't know it? I've tried to cure him of it. Am I losing my skill as a sorceress? No. No, Sybil. Doesn't my witchcraft cure snake bites, chillblains, carbuncles, pink eye, hangnails, and unhappy memories? Yes. Yes, Sybil. Then why can't I rid the boy of this, this fever? George is a man. And human. Human, yes. But hardly a man. He's a mere boy of 20. In love. George. Already a man. In love. He ought to be at home learning a good trade. Like mine. <laughs> Pool of magic. Obey my wish. Bring her vision into my sight. That's right. That's right. Find her. She's at the palace. No, no, inside. Perhaps the throne room. Try the, try the sunken garden in the palace by the oriental pool. That's right. That's right, there she is. There she is. Cold waters chilled your hot temper, my lady. 
No, I'm just as furious as ever. Oh, princess. Oh, it's easy enough for you to talk. You can do whatever you please. Fall in love, fall out of it again. Squire one day, a stable boy the next. But I might as well be a prisoner in a tower. I can't even speak to a man, let alone have him look at me. It's the penalty of being a princess. But even a princess should be allowed romance. Oh, how will I ever meet him? Who, my lady? The one I could love. You will have your chance someday. You run along. But you're gone. I'll dress myself. Well, then what will you do? Oh, what I always do, sit here and dream. Princess Helene. Who are you? What do you want? Stay away. Don't you come any closer. No, princess. I'm going to take care of you. Shout, George. I can hear you. I must leave here. She's in danger. Who in the netherworld are you talking about? Princess Helene. I loved her from the first moment I saw her. <laughs> A reflection in the water and you call it love, you silly child. Something terrible has happened to her. Let me see what you're talking about. Magic mirror. Show me what has upset my boy. The princess is gone, Your Majesty. She's not in her quarters, not in the garden, not by the pool. Yet no one saw her leave the palace. We've searched everywhere. Then turn out the guards, Branton. We have done that, my liege. Until she is found, no one will be permitted in or out of the palace. Who is this? We found him skulking within the eastern postern, my liege. He won't speak. There are means to make him speak. Sir Branton. Your most serene majesty. You can call off the search. The princess, your daughter, is in my castle, under lock and key. Who are you? Rodak. The sorcerer? I'm flattered that my reputation has preceded me. Lodak. You say my daughter is at your castle. But why? How have I hurt you? Why have you done this thing? The answer is very simple. Your father executed my sister for witchcraft when she was only 18 years old. I have waited until your daughter reached that age so that my dragon could relish the flesh of the princess. Lord Eric, I beseech you. Beseech nothing, my liege. You have this worm-eaten sorcerer frighten us. Be careful, Branton. Not I. Lodak, I shall find your castle, free the princess, and see you destroyed. Finding my castle is no great task. It's a short journey of about a week. You simply follow the yellow star of the north. The trick is how to get there. Alive. I shall. I'm afraid not. So I curse the road that lies between this castle and mine. Let no one live who dares the dark journey. Let no man face my seven curses and reach the dragon's lair. Your curses won't stop me from reaching your castle. The Princess Elaine will make a delicate dish for my dragon in exactly seven days' time. And now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Branton, my daughter will die. No, sire, for I will rescue her. 
You risk the seven curses? For Helene, I'd risk 70. The man who saves Helene will have her hand in marriage in half my kingdom, too. Trust me, sire. No, no, it is I who must save the princess, not Sir Branton. I love her. Do you think I'd let you face Lodak's sorcery? I'm not afraid. Three hundred years ago, my father and brother were devoured by Lodak's dragon. And my family were great sorcerers in their own right. But they were no match for Lodak. I am no match for Lodak. I confess it. I fear him almost as much as I hate him. But, Sybil, I... You will stay right here at home where you are safe. You can have anything you want. But All... you're staying here. All I want is my freedom so I can save the girl I love. But you wouldn't understand that not being mortal. I've tried to do my best. Oh, I know you have, Sybil. Can't you call me mother? I'm sorry, mother. You were only a week old when your royal parents died from the plague. I found you, reared you as my own son. Oh, you've been kind and loving, and, and I'd do anything for you. But I can't stay here with you anymore. I'm not a child. I'm 20, and I love Helene. Talk to me of love when you're 420. When your human 20 is old enough to feel love and misery. Now give me my freedom. I must say you're being very difficult tonight. Oh, well, boys will be boys. Uh, we'll, we'll have to cheer you up. Watch Mother now. Mother, not that trick again. <laughs> George, I've never seen you like this before. Look, if you'll cheer up, forget about that girl and Lodak. I'll let you see the presents I've chosen for you when you're 21. What sort of presents, Mother? Come along. I'll show you. Do you like him? He's magnificent. He's yours when you're 21. His name is Bayard. He's no ordinary animal. He possesses magic. This is the fastest horse in all the world. No other steed can beat him. See this? You'll wear it when you ride the stallion. Does this armor possess magic too? No weapon can pierce it. And this is Ascalon, the blade. None like it since the world began. It defies all swords in battle. Black magic is overcome by a touch of the blade. So there, all yours when you are 21. Then I'll let you go after Lodak for my revenge as well as your own. And with the help of their magic, I could save the princess now. No, you're not old enough. You wouldn't know how to use them. Oh, just let me, just let me hold the sword. Just to get the feel of it, please. Well, just for a while. <laughs> Very well. It feels like a part of my own body. Oh, I feel stronger. Of course. <laughs> now, come along. It pleases me to show you something else tonight. Who are they? Once, the six most valiant knights in the world. Uh, it was real black magic, Mother. I wish I could take the credit. 
I've never been as good as that. No, it was my brother. You like Ascalon, George? It's just great. Did the sword do that? Certainly. One touch of the blade and it opens and shuts floors, doors, walls and portcullises. Mm. It shuts things too, you say? What's down there? Well, I haven't been down there in centuries. Used to be my brother's safe deposit box for spells, enchantments, magic ritual and the like. Want to see? Is there any other way out if the crack were closed again? Depends how hard you work at it. A cousin of mine took 80 years to whoomp up a spell that blew the roof off, but don't be afraid. We won't close the crack behind us. Oh, I'm not afraid. Um, you go first, Mother. Coming, dear? Yes. George! George, what have you done? George, let me out! Goodbye, Mother. George! Son, let me out this instant. You can't leave me here. I told you about my cousin. I'll come back and let you out after I've rescued the Princess Helene. Both if you can't come back. With a magic armor, magic sword, magic steed, what can stop me now? You don't know no that George, George, let me out. If I had six brave men like these, I'd have nothing to fear. Monsieur, you have been a long time to come, but on the behalf of my friend, merci bien. Your Majesty, I pledge my sword to your service, my life to our mutual hope, and my heart to the Princess Helene. Very well said, Brent. But I can't help but feel a little nervous. You still won't take these 50 knights who have offered to ride with you? No, sire. They are all brave men, but one man can venture where 50 cannot. You are the bravest of all. Return Helene safely, and I'll be the proudest father-in-law in Christendom. That's a strange ring, Branton. You wear it for luck. Luck must not play a part when your daughter's life is at stake. Go, my friend. And all my good wishes go with you. Your Majesty, these knights and I have come to serve you in your hour of need. That's very kind. Who are you? I am Sir George, a knight by virtue of 400 years of noble lineage. Welcome, good sir. These are my comrades in arms. Sir Denis of France. Votre Majesté, c'est un honneur. Sir Erwick of Germany. Mein Kaiser, we come to serve. Sir Anthony of Italy. A servizio. Sir Pedro of Spain. Su servido, Your Majesty. Sir James of Scotland. Our hearts grieve for you and your sorrow, Your Majesty. And last, Sir Patrick of Ireland. We pledge our lives to your service and to the Princess Helene until she's safe. Gentlemen, speaking for the King, we are grateful for your offer. I am sure that you can be of immeasurable service to His Majesty while I'm away. That's not what Patrick meant, Sir Branton. 
Oh, you know who I am. Have we met? No, I've often seen you. In the field? Not in the field. And I also know you wish to marry the Princess Helene. Oh, quite true. You are all welcome to stay and dance at my wedding. Oh, many thanks. But I prefer to dance at my own. You're talking riddles, young man. Don't try to solve them till we've rescued the Princess Helene. We? I shall rescue Helene. Monsieur tried to understand. We are all sworn to save Sir George's beautiful lady. Sir George's lady? What does the Frenchman mean? Only that I love her and I intend to marry her. You arrogant boy. Do you know the perils of the dark journey? We do, Sir Branton. If you don't share our enthusiasm, we shall be happy to go on without you. How dare you? Your Majesty, have I your permission to give this stripling a lesson in the use of arms? I shall not draw. Except in behalf of Princess Helene. Oh, coward! Draw! Enough! That's enough! Mr. Branton, I like these knights. Surely there's safety in numbers, you and seven good swords. Seven swords and seven curses. When do we start, Sir Branton? Now. We heard you were brought in this morning. I'm Princess Laura, and this is my sister Grace. This is our seventh day. Seventh day? Our last day, unless... Oh, surely you don't believe that about the dragon. There were others here when we arrived, but they're gone now. Well, then your father will do something to save you. Well, his army is probably approaching the castle this very minute. Do the... you really think so? Of course. You'll be on your way home by morning. The two sisters. We're free to go home now, Father. Arrange for our release. You're not going home. Surely you must have spoken to him. I've had three long, dull sessions with him, but nothing could persuade him to give up what I asked for. I don't believe you. He'd pay you anything. Nothing. Instead, he sent an entire company of his bravest knights on the dark journey. The poor lads never even reached the third curse. Take them away. Come on. No! 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 You can't do this! No! You can't do this! No! That just can't be happening. There just couldn't be anybody as cruel and evil as you. Oh, really, Helene? This isn't the first time that a princess has been fed to a dragon. And at least around here, it happens only once a week. Unless you get what you want. What ransom are you asking for me? I'm sorry, but you happen to be a particular case. I'm not asking any ransom for you at all. Then why did you bring me here? My little pet will be hungry again in six days' time. Come, let's watch. No. No, please don't. Please. Oh. Listen. The wind carries well. Don't turn your head away. You'll miss all the fun. See? It all happens very quickly. Now my little pet can sleep. Oh, it's horrible. But it won't happen to me. Their father sent a company. Well, mine will send an army. I hate to disillusion you. Uh, actually, for a while, your father seemed content to let just one knight undertake your rescue. Oh, don't blame your father. The knight talked him into it. And who is this very brave man? I'm sure you know him. Sir Branton. Sir Branton? You don't like Sir Branton? 
Oh, come now. A damsel in distress can't afford to pick and choose. Anyway, don't worry. Neither he nor his companions will ever get here. Companions? I thought you said Sir Brandon was alone. He would have been. But some uh, foolhardy young man named George insisted on coming with them. George? Of course, you don't know him. Well, where is he? Uh, would you care to see him? See him? Certainly. I'll show you the young fool. Tell me, which one is George? The youngest. He's in the lead, riding with Sir Brandon. Those who are wise will turn back now. my mind. So the horse is swift. My ogre will kill them both. Are you quite sure? He did. He'll save me. I know he will. Not a chance. No one has ever survived the seven curses of Lodak. That was only the first. Ha, 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 ha,
a sign of our gallant commander, Sir Branton. Is the man haven not to pay respects when poor Ulrich and Pedro are laid to rest? Nor is the man a coward not to have lifted his sword against that monster? Branton's no coward, I'm sure of that. I will talk of the devil himself. We missed you at the burial, Sir Branton. My regrets, gentlemen, are as deep as your own. But since every minute counts, I thought it wiser for me to ride ahead and reconnoiter. What did you find? Mount your horses, gentlemen, and come see for yourselves.
Omega. Look at that charge. This seems to be an unsavory region, Sir Branson. Would you be sure now that we were taking the right road? Or is it a road we're on at all? The fog's getting thicker. Where's Dennis? Where's James and Anthony? James! Dennis! Anthony! Je suis ici, mon ami! I'm over here! Well, then keep with us! Keep close! Where's Anthony? Anthony! 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 I'm over here! Which way are you? Here! George. We will ride on, gentlemen. They are lost for good, both of them. Not both, look! Anthony has joined Pedro and Elric. Forward, gentlemen.
get my hands on him. George? After all I've done for that boy. To trick me, put me in his power, me, his own foster mother. Where is he? Rudolph! George, his life is in danger. You're, You're tired. 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 Rest. 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 I'll never rest again until I know he's safe. Oh, my boy, what have you done? Mirror of magic, bring me a vision of my boy. Why must you insist my companions turn back, Sir Branton? You and I have a good reason to continue the dark journey. Both of us in love with the same girl. Each of us hopes to rescue her. But what reason are the others to face Lodak's curses? As your commander, I honestly advise you to turn back now while there is still time. Do you, do you hear that, George? We should turn heel and ride back to safety, leaving you and Sir Branton. Sir Bratton makes good sense. Are your wits addled? Lodak's curses have already claimed Ulrich, Pedro, and Anthony. As long as there's one of us left alive, there's hope that the princess can be saved. And nevertheless, I, I couldn't blame you for leaving. Between the curses of Lodak and Brandon's treachery, you'll be needing us. You Irish dog, what do you mean by such insolence? Dog am I, you two-faced hypocrite! Stop it, Pat! I demand an explanation. Now you shall have one. My knights believe you prefer to continue the journey alone, so you can get rid of me. What nonsense. You can't deny that from the first you refused our help. Well, of course I didn't want you coming along. After all, what man wants to join forces with his rival? But once we had begun the dark journey, I accepted you completely. I have come to like you, even admire you. Yet you would have us leave, Sir George. What suspicious minds. Only because of the dangers involved. Lodak's curses are killing us off one by one, curse by curse. Be that as it may, I stay with George. To the end, we'd still be statues staring at that blasted wall if George Hanna turned us into men again. And what good is it to be in a man again if you can't help win the fair Colleen? Well, thank you, Pat. All of you. There's your answer. I have to admire your courage. Good night, gentlemen. His tongue is like the honey from a clover patch. I don't believe a word the man says. If his game proves to be treachery, it will be Sir Bren who does not return from this journey. This I swear. See, you're in a good mood. On the contrary. I'm in a savage mood. I can't stand incompetence. You were to come here alone on this phony rescue. But instead, I must waste my curses to destroy George and his knights. Talk about incompetence. In three days, you've only managed to destroy three of these interfering fools with all your magic powers. Not all my magic powers, Branton. Give me my ring. And I'll dispose of these men in quick order. What use is the ring to you? No mortal can command its magic. You'll get your ring back when I get the princess. That was our bargain. 
Don't you trust me? Not an inch. You're insolent. What if I cast a spell over you and turn you into a dog or a rat or a cat? And take the ring! Go ahead. Give me my ring. Now. Now! Lodak, you can't hurt me while I wear your ring. But once you have it back, what's to save me from your curses? <laughs> Why would I want to hurt you? Why wouldn't you? You're only helping me now because you want to get back this ring which you so stupidly lost. Well, I'll keep my word. I'll give it back in five days' time when these curses are behind me and I've claimed the princess. You're a tough trader, Branton. We both know what we want, and we're both going to get it so long as you dispose of these knights, especially Sir George. Sir George, yes. Twice he squirmed out of your trap, and he could do it again. Oh, stop worrying, Branton. You're worse than an old woman. If George and his knights are not dead by week's end... They'll die long before that. And in circumstances worse than anything I've conjured up yet. One of them's coming here now. To his death. Well, the gallant Frenchman. He followed me. He's in my horse. All right. Don't lose your head. Let him come in here. We'll be ready for him. Cette française Naturellement, monsieur. Comment vous appelez-vous Mignonette, monsieur. Mignonette. Chérie, mignonnette, je te cherche depuis si longtemps. Enfin, je te trouve. Oh, moi aussi. Oh, Denis, je t'aime, mon cher amant. Tu es si beau, si bon. Donne-moi tes lèvres. Encore une fois, uh -uh. donne-moi tes uh -uh. lèvres. Uh -uh. Non, non. Chérie, je te jure, je t'aime. Uh -uh. Oh, moi aussi, cher Denis, je t'aime. I was close. You saved my life, mon ami. We Frenchmen, we have a weakness for a pretty woman. Lorek bewitched you. Yes. I should have known that such a pretty creature will not be at this early hour. But I was robbed of all thought, except one. Lodak knows how a Parisian feels. Why did you come here? I don't remember. Wait, mon dieu. What is it? Branton. What about him? He's in that mill. I'm sure of it. I saw his horse. He's still there. Sir Branton. Senor Branton. Well, good morning, gentlemen.
Is it good? May we ask what you're doing here? Well, someone has to do the thinking for you. As your commander, I thought it wise to spy out the countryside. The upper floor of this mill was the only vantage point. The last time you spied out the land, Sir Anthony died. You can always turn back, Sir Dennis. You have heard my answer to that. As you will. Shall we wake the others and ride on? Gentlemen. Bungler. Yeah, I almost killed him. I tried. I could have killed them both, but that shield, I couldn't face it. That shield? Yes, that shield. Magic. Of course the boy has magic. Sir George? How else could he have escaped three curses? Magic. And I didn't even see it. That foster mother Sybil is working against me. The magic is strong, Lodak. I know it. How will you counter it? Don't you need your ring? Not for Sybil's magic. But once I get my ring, that's the end of Branton. And the princess will be fed to my dragon. All I have to do now is to redouble my magic. And all you had to do was destroy that Frenchman. You were too slow. You need to no. be taught a lesson. No, no. Tall, Hag! No. Tall! No. For five, six, ten hours. Tall until I need you again. Sybil. Lodak. You're looking older. Let me see, we haven't met in what? A um, hundred years? I don't want to talk to you. But I want to talk to you. You've caused me quite a lot of trouble. Lodak, if you touch a hair of my boy's head, I'll fight you. Not a chance. You never had any real talent for witchcraft. You were always tenth rate. Tenth rate? You are quite helpless, Sybil. In four days, the Princess Elaine will be fed to my dragon. And your George will die even sooner than that. There's nothing you can do except look in your stupid mirror or magic pool. And now I'll take care of that. No, they come back, come back! Mirror of magic, bring me a vision of Lodak. Tenth rate, am I? <laughs> Helpless, am I? <laughs> so I can't do anything to help George. Oh, Lodak, Lodak, you'll be sorry for this. Dear me. It's a long time since I've tried this one. Was it one tablespoon or two? One, I'm sure. Where is the unicorn powder? Oh. Now, let's see. Was it two mandrake roots? What else goes in? Eyes. No, I won't have eyes in this one. Yes! Yes! Graveyard dirt. Demons of shame, flesh on the 
rack. See the dog jaws. No power shall lack. Double his magic and be to that blow deck. I wonder what Sybil's cooking up. Recipe. What have you done, Sybil? <sighs> I've finished, poor George. That's what I've done. I've taken his magic away from him completely. George has no more magic. <laughs> There are the tracks of their horses. I can't believe they're ahead of us. How could they take this heat? It's getting hotter by the moment. <coughs> you had no right to let them go on without us. What could I do? They were up before daylight and belligerent at that. Sir Dennis said that he couldn't trust me to spy out the land any longer. Well, you could have wakened us. They swore they'd be back before daylight. Dennis! James! If the heat's any worse up ahead, they'll be burnt to a crisp by this time. I cannot breathe. I, I cannot move my legs. No, come. Go back. Go back. It's, it's death up here. Go back. Stay back. We are finished. Stay, stay, stay back. Heavenly Father! George, will you be looking at that man? He's not even hot and we're burning. Why? Yes, why, Brandon? That, gentlemen, is my secret. <laughs> be in here somewhere. You mean I was in here, George? Branton. I'm sorry I have to leave you now. A long-standing appointment with the Princess Helene. And also with my partner, Lodak. Partner? Yes, his castle is just over the hill. Any uh, last words for either of them? You won't escape us, Branton! I already have escaped you, George. What do we do now? We break out. With Ascalon's help. Ascalon? Oh, did you know my sword was magic? It opens floors, walls, gates, anything. It was magic. Like your horse. Perhaps Lodak's magic is a bit stronger. Oh, and it's no use. You'll only be dull in the blade. There must be some other way out, Patrick.
escaped again. Sir Patrick too? No. Patrick is finished. But Sir George is riding this way. There was no way out of that cave, Lodak. Was it magic? No. Not magic. Then how did George escape? I think, yes. Something stronger than magic. The power of Patrick's faith. Arriving at the castle gate. Where is he going? Helene. No, Lodak, I won't allow that. Don't worry. It'll all work out most satisfactorily, I promise. He doesn't know the way to her cell anyway. He doesn't have to. The spell of the sixth curse is already leading him on. Is this more of Lodak's magic? 
I'm as real as you are. How did you know me? Oh, I think I would have known you anywhere. Lodak has shown me visions of you just to torture me. Coming nearer and nearer. But he always swore that you would never live to get here. But I'm here, and we'll leave together. Oh, I'm too happy to even think. Don't think. Just let me hold you. We must go while we can. What happened to Sir Branton? Rather ask what will happen when I get him within my sword's length. Oh, he's somewhere here in the castle. Let him go. What does anything matter except us and our freedom together? I'll see if the way is clear. Quietly. beginning to think you'd never get here. Brighton. You looking for this? My lady, it's time for us to leave. Well, no, Helene, no. But I want to, George. Aren't you forgetting something, Branton? Hmm? Oh, the ring. I keep my word. All right. Take her. If you still want her. Oh, I want her all right. And she wants me. Mm, always and forever. Helene. What is this? Helene! Did you really think I keep my word once I had the ring? But I don't understand. Where is Helene? Over here. She belongs to me. We made a bargain. I don't bargain with mortals. I destroy them. Monster! All right, Branton. It's time to take care of you. Prepare her for the dragon. Take Sir George to the dungeon. You mustn't give up, or it's the end of him, the end of them both. What will you do, Sybil? I must think. Think. Try to remember the right recipe. And give him back his magic, Sybil? Of course, I have to. Where did I go wrong? Witches of Hecate, blacker than black, demons of shame, flesh on the rack. It, it's the next line. That's the one I got wrong. And it rhymes with rack. Swack? Smack? Snack? No, no, none of those. No, I'll go to Lodak's castle. That's what I'll do. I'll give it some thought on the way. Save him, Sybil. I'll try. Well, here goes. <laughs> George, this is the real Helene, I swear it. All right now, go ahead. Show me how a pair of young mortals in love bid farewell before they die. Oh, very tender. But a little late, wouldn't you say? Oh, I love you, George. Always remember that. I love you, Helene. Come, Helen. Come. You'll have a good view from the window, Sir George. A feast! A feast! No doubt we want a feast! 
feast. Hurry, you pick the best of the little people for the stew. You will pick the wine. The rest of you know what you have to do. Hurry. Please, quick, hurry. Hurry. Quick, cut the ropes, my wrist. Thank you, I'm grateful to you. My sword has lost its magic, but it's still a sword. on the rack. It's the next line. If only I could remember the next line.
attack! That's the word. Which is of Hecate, blacker than black. Deeds of shame, flesh on the rack. Give to my boy the power to attack. of hell, curse upon curse. Defiant mortal, you dared to challenge me. Six curses could not destroy you, but now you must face the seventh, me! (laughs) 